Welcome back everybody. Today I just want to give some insights into the oil filter block for our SR20 DET engine. What does an oil filter block look like? What does it do? Well it's this piece that I'm holding in my hand it sits on the intake side of our engine. Obviously its main purpose is to house our oil filter. Another purpose is to house our oil pressure sender unit or oil pressure sensor of which I've unfortunately stripped the threads when I installed an aftermarket unit a couple years ago with the wrong thread, so watch out when you're installing one of those. The third and really big function of our oil filter block is this bypass valve right here. What does a bypass valve do? What's the purpose of it? First, I just want to dive into how an oil filter works. It's very elementary, I know, but let me just touch base here. Now, when your engine is running, the oil pump is sucking up all of the oil from the engine sump where it's going to be filtrated through this oil filter to feed the rest of your engine. So it gets fed in through this outer ring here where it passes through filtration media out back through the center to feed your bearings, your camshafts, your cylinder walls, basically just make sure that your engine has the blood that it needs to keep living. Now, that's where this bypass valve comes in. A bypass valve essentially operates at, stays closed at low pressures, generally around idle pressures, for this car being 10 to 12 PSI. I'm not sure if that's actually the pressure for this unit right here, but we're going to stick with that for simplicity sake. Simplicity sake. When that pressure exceeds that low pressure threshold, the bypass valve opens up. Well, oil that comes from the sump, comes up through this oil filter block, bypasses our filter right here so it doesn't pass through it at all, around through some valleys in here, and goes straight back into our engine where unfiltered oil is fed back through our engine. Now ideally, obviously, this bypass valve would never open because we don't want to see any unfiltered oil passing through our engine, but there are actually three scenarios, quite common, where we utilize this bypass valve. The first one being cold starts. Now when your engine has been shut off for a while, a few hours, that engine oil gets very thick and thick oil can be quite hard to pass through your filtration media which can cause a high pressure differential from the filter through to your engine oil galleys right here. It can cause oil pressure loss, oil starvation, and it potentially cause your oil filter to swell up and leak and hopefully not explode. That doesn't really happen very often, but the same thing can happen with high engine speeds. Your engine's pumping up so much oil as it's revving at high RPMs that there's just so much volume that the filtration media has a hard time passing through to lubricate your engine. So when this happens, the bypass valve opens, let some of that unfiltered oil through so that the engine can stay lubricated. Now the third scenario that we have, which ideally shouldn't happen because you should take good care of your car, is that the oil filter itself becomes clogged from negligence of not conducting not conducting proper oil changes at the correct intervals. So not only is your oil filter clogged, but your oil filter is now just so dirty that it's clogging up this oil filter and is now being sent through your engine, uh, unfiltered oil through your engine and causing more damage. But the idea here is that even though the oil might be dirty, it's still better than no oil at all. So dirty lubrication is better than no lubrication at all. Now, if you haven't already caught it, these are all pretty common scenarios, which means that there's always a little bit of dirty oil that's not being filtrated by your oil filter and is instead being sent to your oil galleys to lubricate your bearings, your cylinder walls, your camshafts, the whole nine yards. It may just be a little bit, but it's important that your engine stays lubricated as best as it can. We're moving away from this and on to our aftermarket Tomei oil filter block. Now, some of the key features with this is that it has two 10 AN fittings, which will allow us to cleanly run an oil filter relocation kit. This also opens up the possibilities of easily adding an oil cooler kit as well. Another thing is that it has is it holds an additional uh, 1 8th NPT, sorry, 1 8th PT 
thread port where we can run not only our OEM pressure sensor if we wanted to, but also our aftermarket one, which I will install here soon, or possibly even an oil pressure, oil temperature sensor. Now, one of the cons with this, obviously, is that with these Dash 10 AN fittings here, we can't run a local oil filter right here at the block. It needs to be relocated, so this requires additional parts to be for this to be util utilized. And one of the one of the other big differences is that we no longer have a bypass valve right here. Now, if we don't have a bypass valve, once I run into those three scenarios that I mentioned earlier, this that could to potentially cause a problem for us. Not to worry though, as modern day filters also incorporate a bypass valve internally. Same thing happens when, an oil, when oil pressure exceeds, for this oil filter in particular, 11 to 17 PSI, the bypass valve will open and allow us to continue to have the proper oil lubrication that we need. So, though some of it is getting filtrated, not all of it is getting filtrated. But as I said before, dirty lubrication better than no lubrication at all. Now as a quick installation tip, if we remember how engine oil gets fed through our filter, through the outside and back through the inside, we can take a look at our OEM filter block and recognize that oil gets fed through the perimeter of our filter housing right here and gets fed back into the engine through our center right here. Now if we turn these blocks around and can relate them to one another and how engine gets fed in and out, we can then identify that our oil outlet is going to be this guy right here and the clean oil filtrated being fed back into the engine is going to be this center one right here. My personal thoughts on OEM filter block versus aftermarket filter block, if you're going to be daily driving your car at all where it's going to be seeing a lot of cold starts and possibly longer intervals between oil changes, I'd certainly recommend staying with the OEM block as that bypass valve is going to help you increase the longevity of your engine. Now if you're looking for more of a race type orientation where you're going to be taking your car to the track, obviously this oil filter block will help you with cleaning up any kind of oil filter relocation kit, um, oil cooler installation. Installing those things is definitely going to increase your oil capacity and therefore increase your oil cooling. But it does require additional parts and can add a little bit of complication to your oiling system. For my case, I definitely needed to go that route and got a little impatient and didn't want to wait around for another oil filter block to come my way. So if you still have yours, definitely recommend to still run it. If you need to switch over to the Tomei one, just be aware that you're going to need some extra parts to run it. I hope you guys got something out of this short, quick little video. If you have any questions at all over this stuff, feel free to reach me down in the comments below. Have a great day. I'll catch you next time.